These are two examples of the Gretsch Jet, probably one of the most underappreciated single cut electric guitars on the market. I'm going to tell you why you should love them. Check it out. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to our channel, where have you been? Make sure to click on the subscribe button, click the bell for notifications, comment below, and like the videos. If you'd like to support our channel, buy stuff from us. And you can also visit our Teespring store link below for custom designed t-shirts like this Stranger String shirt, you know, the Laundry Day shirt, Josh behind the camera, our man squatch he designed, very cool stuff on there. Anyways, enough of that. We are now shilling guitars. These are Gretsch Jets. Very cool. If you are not familiar with them, a few players like George Harrison, among others, have played these over the years, and I consider them to be extremely cool and underappreciated single cuts. What do you think, Cooper? I think they're very cool. I mean, they... I'm a fan of everything that Gretsch does, you know, but these specific ones are cool because they're very affordable, they're well-made, very comfortable to play, and they sound unlike any other single cut that would probably be more popular. Anyway. Yeah, so, you know, when you look at the world of electric guitars, typically, over maybe generalizing, but generally, you have it divided into two body shapes. You have a single cut and you have a double cut. And then you have, like, weird stuff. And that's where you'd put like the Explorers and the Vs and the Hagstroms and you know just anything that is very, very different. And you can turn it into anything. You could, you know, cut into the shape of Texas. You can, you know, have it into a rectangle that's extremely uncomfortable. You can, you know, I, I once had a biology teacher in high school, and I don't know if he ever has watched our videos. Uh, he taught aquatics biology, and he was an electric guitar player. He had one that was a toilet seat. Which is it's a weird guy. That's you know? such a specific anecdote that I don't think those tones were yeah. definitely down in the toilet. But oh, you know, uh, he even had a pink strat with a Mr. Bubble sticker. Anyways, so there's single cuts and there's double cuts. These are single cuts. There is a double cut version though. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of like an SG in that it's basically just the same shape, cutting it out. But the most popular single cuts on the market. What would you say they are? I don't know. Have you heard of the Les Paul? I have along with a thing called the Telecaster. Yeah, just, I mean, they're not super popular anymore, but back in the <laughs> 50s, 60s, they were absolutely huge. Yeah, a few guys like uh, Eric Clapton, you know, and, and some others played those guitars. But, but seriously, if you look at, if we, if we take the electric guitar market and we divide it into single and double cuts and we look at the most popular, the most popular single cut guitars are Telecasters and Les Pauls. And the most popular double cut guitars are Stratocasters, Stratocasters and, and SGs. SGs. Period, you know, and you know, there's probably you could put the PRS is coming up in there. Mm -hmm. the, you know, their traditional double cut body shape is is very popular and kind of a amalgam of Les Paul and Fender things kind of thrown together. Paul Reed Smith has talked about that, but these are I think underappreciated and they certainly have their fans. But let let me tick off a few things. These two guitars are the Electromatic line. They're under a thousand dollars, and for under a thousand dollars. The fit and finish is phenomenal, okay? They are both chambered, so they're not completely solid body, which means they weigh a heck of a lot less than, say, a Les Paul would. And they're very, very versatile. So the one that I'm holding is available with the Filtertron pickups, blacktop Filtertrons, and a Bigsby. Now these humbucking style pickups are a little bit brighter, a little bit more twangy, compared to like a traditional path style pickup. And so you can, there's players who have adapted or adopted these because they have found that you can kind of get that in between, between like a Les Paul path style and like a Tele sound. This can cover that, which is very, very cool. In fact, have you ever played a like humbucking guitar and it's too muddy? Yep. Like you want that volume, you want some of that thickness, yeah. but you need to stick out a little bit more in the mix, yeah, that's what these do. 
And so they are awesome pickups. And the fact that you can get it with a Bigsby, there's one Tele, as far as I know, in the Fender lineup, the Ventera 60s Tele has a Bigsby, and there's none other that are produced outside of the custom shop, as far as I know. So if you want a Bigsby on a Tele, you better look elsewhere. And there's nothing Gibson currently makes, either from Epiphone or the Gibson lineup, again, outside of the custom shop, yeah. that has a Bigsby or a similar type of vibrato system on it. But with this, you can choose this guitar or you can choose this guitar. Yeah. So you've got one with the Bratrons. Yeah, um, and not a Bigsby, but... Not a Bigsby. Not a Bigsby. I don't know if you can <laughs> see that one. Um, so tell me about the difference between Bratrons and the Filtertrons that you have, because obviously they're the same style. They are. Th um, so they're very similar style. They're both humbucking pickups. The Bratrons are more like a path style pickup. So there is uh, a difference in the gain output, and also the mid-range is more focused on these than on these. So these are more of a treble peak. This has that strong mid-range peak. Um, so this is going to be a lot more similar to a path style pickup. So if you're wanting that sound, you know, if you're going after that kind of, you know, vintage 50s humbucking tone, then this gives you that. Um, and if you want something else, then this gives you that. Same yeah. model with different options. You've got the stop bar because I think Gretsch thinks that, and probably rightly so, that the player that's going for this style is, is just more interested in a stop bar. You know, they, they want the sustain, they want the tuning stability, you might drop D, whatever. They're not going to be using, you know, the, the tremolo from a big speed to get that kind of waggle uh, from the sound of the, of the guitar. So this is going to be a little bit hotter output and it's going to just sound more like a Les Paul would typically, but you know, it's a little bit different. And then the control layout we haven't talked about. Yeah. One of my only complaints about SG's, S335's, Les Paul's is if I want to play with dynamics, like you want to swell a note or something, if you're in the middle position, it's pretty much impossible without an expression pedal because you've got two volumes in control there. The setup here with this one master volume control allows you to mix them and yet still have that master volume, which yeah. I think is great. Yeah, that's very cool. I This is completely separate, but the thing that I like about the Bigsby with the Filtertrons is it reminds me a lot of like the Chet Atkins old mm -hmm. school, very country, um, rockabilly style, but it's in the package of a smaller, probably more comfortable, um, and if you're not into the semi-hollow sound um, and you want that solid body while chambered, still a solid body. Um, yeah. It's it's very cool and I think the versatility that comes from something like that and from something like this makes these pretty pretty awesome for a country player, jazz player, rock player, obviously, um, but kind of covering all the bases and getting some old school tones, which is really cool. Yeah, it's funny that you mentioned, I think in the past we probably did see these guitars in a lot of hands of, of certain people who played rock and blues, but a, a lot of rockabilly and country type stuff. But you know, where a lot of these particularly have found a, uh, uh, a welcome audience is in like the worship guitar community because I think the articulation that you get with the Filtertrons allows you to kind of cut through that mix and have some of that chime. And then also the Bigsby is really great. If you have anything that is kind of like what you would typically hear on a lot of church worship recordings or ambient style music where you've got like shimmer and swells and you're just adding that that warble from the tremolo, you know, in there as well. There's it's a lot of texture, and so um, I'm surprised a lot more like shoegazer bands aren't grabbing these as well because it really just appeals to that style of music a lot. But the reason that I wanted to make sure that we you know hit on these great guitars is that I think there's a lot of people who are in the market for an electric guitar that are in this price point and they are looking for you know, a really well-made guitar that maybe does a lot of these, you know, checks off these boxes. And these, between the two of them, have so much versatility in what you can do and great looks and feel to boot that, you know, if I'm being honest, like Gretsch's Pro line is phenomenal, but these are so good that it's almost like you get 95% yeah. of what you get from their Pro line by buying these Electromatics. And um, I just, I mean, we've talked a lot about it with Epiphone versus Gibson, how an Epiphone in a certain price range might 
be a better suitor than a lower a price Gibson. Lower price Gibson. Yeah. This is a very, very reasonable price range for something that it's already going to be like a, uh, it's not the pro line, but it's like a professional grade instrument that's made very well. And it has all the sounds that you kind of need for, you know, a great gigging electric guitar or something great for the studio. I think Gretsch that. knows this too, because they took Electromatic off the headstock and they made it, it really, small. really small yeah. right there. And if you take the pick guard off and change it, it doesn't sound at all. Yeah. So. Yeah. Both very, very cool guitars, but they do sound very different. So we're going to put them through their paces so you can hear the differences specifically between the Bigsby setup uh, or Bigsby style setup filter trons and the Stoptail Brontron pickups on these Gretsch jets. Check it out. <laughs> So there you have it, Gretsch Jets, and they should hopefully after this video be much more appreciated by the guitar buying public at large. You know, this one is even lighter because it doesn't have the hardware of yeah. the Bigsby licensed tremolo down below. But that, man, the lightness of these is really, really nice. There's also some other cool features on these, like they come with built-in strap locks. Yeah. You know, these kind of thread off and then you thread your strap on, which is really cool. The hardware is great. The just these are phenomenal guitars. So you should definitely check them out if you've been looking at a single cut, particularly like in the Les Paul style, but even if it's a Tele, you know, you need to be taking a look at these guitars. If you'd like more information about them, you can find it on our website, it's alamomusic.com. You can check out all the specs, the various colors that are available, and you can also chat with an associate who can help you kind of sort through the mix and all of the options that are out there in the guitar buying world, because there's a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Too many, but they're all good. There's never too many guitars. <laughs> you always need one more. That's true.
That's true. So if you'd like more information, again, go online. And remember, at the end of the day, whether it's a Gretsch single cut or a double cut or anything else, the best guitar in the world is... The one that George Harrison played. That one. Just kidding. The one that you're making music on. Right yeah, that's now. right. Even if it's a George Harrison song. So <laughs> uh, that's our message to you. Check these out in the mix of the other ones. We'll keep bringing great reviews, comparisons, and discussion topics to you in the world of guitars. So if you haven't done so, make sure that you click the subscribe button. Click the bell to turn on notifications. Comment below. Tell us what you think and like our videos. We really appreciate you, our community, coming and joining us on a weekly basis to check out these great guitars with us. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Once again, you guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you want to learn more about the guitar, check out Alamo Music. Oh, Pat. Hey, everybody. I love guitar videos just like you do. But guess what? Alamo Music Center has another YouTube channel. You can check out all the piano and keyboard reviews that we have and see more of me. Cooper, do we have another one of those? He's fine.